Hello, I'm Michael Churin. I'm a part-time tabletop role-playing game designer, and this is my vlog. Uh, it is uh, Wednesday, December the 12th, 2018. Um, I'm going to try to produce one of these uh, once a month. It's like an early New Year's resolution. I want to give myself the space to talk about... Um, the games that I'm designing and playing and running. I'm going to start by talking about the game I'm working on like the most right now, which is called Plunderlight. Plunderlight is a dark fantasy role-playing game about ambitious heroes following their convictions in a world of stark iniquity. There are deals in dark alleys, harrowing chases through haunted forests, Duels fought in the morning rain, and packs made with otherworldly powers, with their own best interests at heart. We play to find out if the characters' convictions drive them to disaster and sorrow, wealth and fame, or to revolution. So, uh, I'm writing in this uh, setting space and genre, which is uh, gothic fantasy. And a lot of games in the space feel hopeless to me. They feel like uh, characters are unlikely to accomplish much. I really like the material culture of those sorts of settings. So I wanted to add something to the options uh, for people who want to play in like dark late medieval slash early renaissance settings wanted to add something to that catalog of games where characters can succeed um, and improve their own fortunes or make the world a better or different place so that's what the game's about but that doesn't tell you anything about why i'm designing it. i mean it's a reason i'm designing it but not the reason. Um, so this game is going to have what I think is a pretty unique format um, for a tabletop role-playing game. And, you know, it's going to be a book. So it's not, like, groundbreaking uh, unique. But it's going to have some juicy big margins and there's a reason for that. And there's a story behind the reason for that. Um, so I first got the idea for, for this project uh, about three years ago. Uh, I started playing uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics um, with an old acquaintance. It's my first big time playing an OSR game. Um, and it made me start to want to like read more about the like principles of the movement. But the the idea I got got hooked on uh, was this idea of rulings, not rules. Um, which, if you're not familiar, is um, the idea that a, a game instead of providing a bunch of rules for edge cases, like what happens when you wrestle someone or when you fall off a cliff, or when you take cover, or whatever. Instead of giving like edge cases for all those things, a game should give a simple mechanic, a simple core mechanic, and let the game master decide how to judge what happens in the game with just their core mechanic. Um, and in my reading about it, I stumbled upon a blog post, and I, I wish I could remember who wrote it or where I found it. I, I can't, I can't find it again. But it was written by uh, an old guy, an old grognard, who played Dungeons and Dragons when it was brand new in the like seventies and eighty, early eighties, the era that. OSR folk harken back to. 
And his article, it was, you know, um, maybe a little unkind to the, the OSR movement, their, their ideas of how old school play worked. Because he said, that, like, yeah, the, the game back then, Dungeons and Dragons back then, was obtuse and didn't give a lot of guidance on how to handle edge cases. Um, and so, in figuring out the game, people would have to invent, they'd have to make their rulings, but they'd write them down. When that situation would come up again, um, they wouldn't have a consistent way of dealing with it. And eventually, people would fill their notebooks with their own procedures for play so that at a certain point every group was playing their own D&D and you would sit down to play with a new table and you would ask you know what house rules do you play with what how have you solved these problems I was reminded of um, early printed books um, and and medieval manuscripts, uh, written handwritten books, which were produced with um, huge margins compared to like modern paperbacks and textbooks, giant margins, and the intent or one of the intents of providing margins of that size was to, to give readers room to include their own observations and annotations and commentary on the primary work of the of the text and i thought like wouldn't it be cool if someone put out a role-playing game in that format with gi these giant margins so that people could include their own interpretations of rules and their own procedures for handling things and their own house rules and so that is plunderlight um, plunderlight is being laid out um, with margins of a size and proportion uh, inspired by uh, Incanabula early printed books which um, nicely coincides with the setting um, because that late 15th, early 16th century setting is when books were invented, um, when the movable type press came into being and people started printing books instead of hand copying them. So yeah, uh, Plunderlight is designed with a pretty simple mechanic and um, a basic procedure and mechanism um, for giving bonuses and penalties, but not a lot of exhaustive, um, this is what you do when you wrestle someone, or when you fall from a great height, or when you take cover behind a wall, or, or whatnot. Um, and my intent is to give readers license to write in their book their own interpretations of the rules and procedures and additions to it so that each game master who has their copy of Plunderlight can turn it into their own game. So uh, that is uh, the story of what Plunderlight is and where I got the idea for it and why, one of the reasons, rather, that I think it's uh, special. Um, so yeah, I have been Michael Truran. Um, you can find Plunderlight at um, either by backing my Patreon, um, which is patreon.com slash viking underscore powered that's the past tense of power 
um, or on my itch store at um, bad-quail.itch.io and then you can do slash plunderlight if you want to go straight to the game. But it's the only thing I have for sale there right now. Um, it's presently only available in PDF uh, and doesn't have illustrations. Um, but if you want to get it early and see it as it is being developed, that's an avenue to do it. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Viking underscore powered. And yeah, I hope you all have enjoyed this video and have a lovely rest of your morning or afternoon or night or whenever it is you watch this.